Welcome to the Deep Dive, the advanced web development podcast brought to you by InDev.Dev. Hi, people. Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, I have a very special guest. He's an international speaker. He's an international writer as well. Countless number of articles for Angle and Dev and InDev.Dev. He's an open source contributor. And maybe I can start by asking you, Santosh Yadav, what's your biggest or most important contribution to other people's projects that are open source? I remember I created the Netlify Builder. That was the thing which I really liked. Because uh, it's being, uh, if I'm not wrong, I saw the repository. It's being used by like 150, more, more than 150 repositories now. So, and I got some responses as well that uh, they really liked it and they can just now deploy their uh, blog posts. So they have their own static websites, which they can just deploy on Netlify using just the builder. And that has proved to be very popular, right? Yeah, exactly. But you did it just for your own interest in the beginning to, to learn about that. Yeah. Yeah, just wanted to learn how the how builder works, and uh, I really like Netlify because they are doing uh, they are doing so much for the community. Like it's free for open source projects, so I, so I thought let's do something for them. Okay, so officially, welcome to the show, Santosh. Thank you, thank you for the invite. I have one more thing to ask you before we get onto the main topic of the day. I heard that you mm -hmm. once played a British soldier in a play for Independence Day. Can you tell me about yeah, that story? Yeah, that was really funny. I think I was in sixth or seventh standard, and uh, I, I was. Uh, it was like I was really getting bored that I have to attend all the lectures. And, you know, kids in school, right? So you always get bored. <laughs> so I just saw a few of my friends leaving the class before the lecture. I was like, what? How they can just leave the class? Because it's not allowed. Even you cannot go outside. So I just followed them and then went to a laboratory where they were practicing. So I was like, okay, what's what's happening here? Uh, we are actually practicing for one of the play uh, for Independence Day. I was like, okay, uh, so can I be part of it? Because I, I am really bad at acting, believe me. <laughs> but I just wanted to do that because I can skip the classes. So she <laughs> said, yes, uh, we are looking for two people. but. And uh, we want them to play, Brit play British soldiers. So I was like, okay, British soldier. I don't look like one, but uh, let's let's do it because I don't want to sit in the class. So I just went to the class and uh, grabbed my friend and told him, let's go. We, we will play the British sol sh soldiers. So he was like, okay, ah, let's go. To, let's go. We, we don't want to sit in the class. And then that's how we got uh, auditioned because we had like a uh, minute. Uh, I mean, our role was re really small. We just have to come. Uh, there were like freedom fighters. We have to come and then shoot them and then leave. <laughs> That's it. So it was really a fraction of seconds. and But I did that and I was, it was really funny. Uh, I, uh, and I'm glad that it was never recorded. <laughs> funny story. <laughs> okay. Happy uh, ending. <laughs> uh, for, for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get on to the main topic. Today, we're going yeah. to discuss a thing that was introduced by the Angular CLI, but it's actually relevant mm -hmm. to many other kinds of projects. And uh, yeah. it's, the topic is builders and schematics because they are kind of related, but they can be mm -hmm. used outside of Angular, the Angular ecosystem. Isn't that right? Yes, it is. So uh, when I remember, so when I started uh, learning, I, first I started learning about schematics and uh, I used to think whether it is it is required to be uh, used by developers because as a developers, we mostly focus on the commands which we use. Then uh, I realized there was a scenario in my project where uh, uh, what we had was a framework and we had to actually release the framework and then give it to the developers as well. So our developers were like the different teams in the uh, organization. And uh, every time I have to release, I have to actually update a branch in my GitHub repository, a different branch. And that was really manual. So I have to actually uh, weekly or monthly, whenever I have to release, I have to go and update everything, even though there is a breaking change. So I have to do it manually. So of course, as a developer, you get bored, right? After doing some things for like um, a month or uh, uh, even a year. So I got bored. I was like, okay, why am I doing this manually? Even I'm, am I a developer really? <laughs> because I don't feel like that. And then I started exploring 
and then i realized that okay schematics is something which is which can be used which can be used to automate all this and i don't have to do it manually anymore even i can just uh, give this schematics to the developers and they can run it and their project is updated up to date and uh, even there is any breaking changes i can just let them know okay so you were publishing an internal library for the corporation yes and other yeah. projects dependent on that yeah so it was kind of an, a schematic to upgrade from in their yeah, projects project. okay exactly so that's similar to how angular does now right yes so what ng update does right so uh, they they give you ng update and then you can just run ng update and it's you are updated <laughs> to the latest version yes and uh, this is very nice it has made the whole update process much easier for angular projects a lot easier yeah a lot easier <laughs> I remember updating my project from Angular 5 to 7, uh, and it was really a pain because a lot of things had to be done manually, so a big pain. <laughs> yes, there are so many automated migrations now, and we can get into the details a bit later about what yeah. what that experience is like. But first, let's discuss mm -hmm. what is actually schematics. What are they? Schematics, if you think about the internals, they it's an API. It's an API which is available by using which you can actually play with the file system. In schematics, you already have a virtual file system, which you can create, modify, delete, whatever you want to. So just take a scenario of uh, ng generate, right? So what you do, ng generate component, and then, then you give a component name. And what happens is it creates a folder structure for you. In the repository, which I have seen is, there are two things inside actually Angular. So there are commands, which which actually executes all the schematics. So if I think about ng generate, so ng generate is not a schematic. Ng generate is a command, and then component directives. Those are schematics, which which are actually uh, executed by those commands. But they, what Angular team uh, went ahead and did is they said, okay, now schematics are pretty powerful. And the one thing which I like about the Angular team, right? So they they create something, they test it, and it's not like the testing is at normal level, they actually do it on production because they give it to the developers. They test it, if it works fine, then they release it as a public API, the same thing which happened with schematics. And uh, now we can just go ahead and write our own schematic. And the biggest advantage which I have seen from schematics is of course, ng-add and ng-generate. ng-add and ng-update, uh, yes, the yeah. one we just discussed. Okay, so ng yeah. add, that's where you add a library to your project and it could have some yeah. Angular specific migration or integration mm -hmm. to set up yeah, exactly. whatever needs to exactly. be set up. Yeah. yeah, that's very clever because instead of writing instructions about this is how you add this library to your Angular project, the migration can mm -hmm. just do it and you can you can even opt out of it by not using ng add, you can just do yarn add or npm install. But if you do the yeah. ng add, if there are any Angular migrations, you will get that as part of the up or the install process yep. here. Yep. It's very smart. I remember, uh, I remember the old days when uh, I was trying Angular Material for the first time, and there was one page of instructions: do this, do this, install HammerJS, and I was like, okay, why to do this? <laughs> I mean, this this thing should be automated. And uh, finally, we we had ng add finally, and then everything is a single command. Maybe people know something like this. What were the other tools we used for this in the old days, like five years ago? What was the most similar thing to schematics uh, before, before there was an Angular, uh, Angular CLI with this? There were, uh, I think, generators, generators, human generators. Exactly. So yeah, that, that was pretty, pretty popular back in those days. So everywhere that, that, that there was some human generator available. Yeah, so you would say like, yo, React, or I don't know, there was probably a yo, <laughs> Angular yep. JS, something. People yeah, could uh, like contribute that. from the community as well. So yeah. it was yeah, an yeah. equally flexible tool to, to do these, mm -hmm. like uh, scaffold a project or generate a, mm -hmm. whatever, a component or a page or something. Yeah. Yes. So how is this, how do you implement a schematic? So uh, it's it's pretty simple. So you, uh, you have a command, which is of course provided by the Angular CLI itself. And you just need to do uh, to create a new schematic project. You just need to run uh, first install the schematic globally. So you have uh, Angular Dev Kit slash schematic uh, package, which is of course available on npm. You can just install it globally. Once it is installed, the the, the way you do ng new, right? So you don't have to do ng new. You just have to say schematics are blank. So there are templates types. So we will say okay blank template, and then you can just give a parameter called name. So you can say hyphen fn name equals to whatever schematic you want to generate. For example, I want to call my schematics as ng add. 
So I can say, okay, ng add, and it will just create the uh, structure for you. Uh, it will add index.ts, index spec.ts, all the files. And uh, then you can just start working on top of it, whatever you want to do, right? So Okay. So there are different types of schematics like that Angular CLI uses itself. There's an ng add, we've heard. There's an ng update. Mm -hmm. And I already forgot. <laughs> There's an ng generate, right? But that's kind of... Ng generate, yeah. um, C could you do your own ng generate? Uh, yes, you can. So uh, what you have to do is you have to write your own schematics. As I said, the commands are already available. So you have to just specify you in case you are writing a schematic for generate. So you can say, say okay, your schematics and whatever name you want to give. For example, uh, material, angular material. Let's take an example of angular material, which has a lot of schematics called navigation. Uh, there is something called address. address and form, uh, there is yeah. something for table. Yep, address form and then there is something for table. So what they have done is there is a schematic and uh, they have given it a name called uh, address address form or table or nav navigation, right? So you say ng generate and then your package name, which you will, of course, once you publish it on NPM. So your package name, uh, for example, angular slash material and then colon the schematic which you created. For example, I said navigation and then you can just pass all the parameter, different parameters. For example, when you do ng generate, right, you can pass always path. You can pass name, module. So it's up to you how many parameters you actually want to support. So it's it's pretty simple. So the, uh, there is nothing like I have to write my own ng generate command again. It's not like that. So you have to just create a schematic and then plug in. That's it. Did you ever create your own component generation schematic, mm -hmm. for example? I never had to, but uh, I, I I wrote ng add multiple times because that's something which is required in builders when I, when I set up a new builder. And I'm creating a new UI component library where we, we want to write few schematics like that. So we have started. Yes, and, because uh, it took see. it took me a long time before I wanted to use the ng generate, and it was mostly mm -hmm. because every time I did ng generate component, I had to delete all this stuff that I didn't want to be there. So I would have been a lot uh -huh. better off by doing my own schematic that removes some of the, that stuff for me. Ah, okay. So I was mm -hmm. always writing the components, all the boilerplate by hand because I didn't oh. want to do ng generate and then delete a bunch of stuff. I thought that was really annoying. For example, the on init, ng on init hook. I never wanted that because most of my components <laughs> don't use that. So that was really annoying. Uh, and yeah, there was a few other things. Uh, I remember mm -hmm. one of the things that I used to add as one of the first things was uh, add the display block to the host element. Because every okay. time you do like a custom element name, it'll be an inline element by default yeah. in its styles. So I always wanted to add that display block, which would make it, mm -hmm. make it easier to use with the element debugger in, in your developer tools. And now there's even mm -hmm. an option to that in one of the latest versions of Angular. So I was yeah. very happy to see That's that. Good. Sometimes I would also do like, instead of calling it my whatever dot component dot TS, maybe I would call it my whatever dot container dot ts uh -huh. or dot page dot ts and that's uh -huh. an option now as well with the default yeah, I, angular uh, component schematic yep. yeah so that, that's that's really great so you have type and the other one was display right so they they are added recently display i generally yes. uh, yeah so i generally uh, override the schematic using angular.json for example if i create a new component i just want to have a view encapsulation enabled by default and uh, change detection strategy. So I generally go to angular.json and then uh, update those. Okay, values. so you're talking about, we can set default options for the schematics in our yep. angular.json configuration. Yes. Yeah, yeah there's there's so kind can, of a property yeah. called schematics. Schem yeah, and schematics. one per schematic name and, and options object yep. as well. Yes, that's, yeah, exactly. that's very handy. That's very handy. Yeah. I found that we actually quickly found a lot of candidates for project specific schematics because we were doing mm -hmm. manual stuff all the time. Every time we created a new project, we had to set up a custom test framework, uh, different from the one by Angular or something. Um, uh -huh. So that was a lot of manual work and we had to do like a readme file of, with some convention and an API documentation. So we mm -hmm. would be a lot better off by, by creating schematics to do this because you could easily forget <laughs> and not catch it in the code yeah. review. So they are, okay. they are very handy for a lot of things. One, yeah. one command that's built into the Angular CLI related to maybe, I don't even know if it's related to schematics or builders or both, but it, that's the ng deploy 
and you know a lot about this. So please explain. Ah, yes. So ng deploy command, uh, it's actually a command. So, and it again, so there is a command called deploy and then uh, there are builders. So it goes ahead and executes the builders. So if I talk about the builders, you already have few uh, in your project. So if you say it's serve, build, test, right? So if you see the, uh, see the properties, so uh, there will be first property is builder always. And then there are some options. So uh, when I think uh, builder where builders builders was released in Angular 8 and few people, I think Minko was the first one to actually write uh, deploy builder. But th that's what I thought. That's what I thought that that was the first builder which was ever written. And then I realized Jeb, Jeb actually wrote many and it was it was really popular. So he has written few on uh, overriding the webpacks, webpack configuration, and then uh, some Karma configuration. So he had already many builders written. And of course, until unless you don't read it in docs, you never come to know about it. And of course, Jeb is Jeb, Jeb is awesome, right? So, yeah, so Jeb so he, he has this uh, he has this project called uh, NGX Builders or something like that. Is that right? Uh, no, 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 it was not NGX Builders. NGX Builder was created by me. So, oh, uh, that, yeah. So NGX Builders. Uh, so uh, I think it was Webpack override or something like that. Okay. So uh, yeah, what I did is uh, so just to just to give you an idea, uh, when I was working with builders, so I realized there are few many more builders which are available. So I created a website called angular-builders.dev and where I can find all the custom builders. So yep, so I found just found it. So it's uh, angular builders slash custom webpack. Oh. So that was yeah, that was something which was written by Jeb. Then he had multiple uh, options: browser, server, karma, dev serve. So those were the packages he wrote. And then I think he wrote something for karma and Jasmine again. So uh, that was the first time. Uh, and then I realized Minko wrote one for GitHub deploy. So I was like, I really liked the idea. So it was pretty simple because. Uh, I've been writing Node.js code for a long time. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable writing those code. And then I realized, okay, so in builders, what you do is you execute a package. Okay, so just a node package, which has your index.ts file. So it executes that index.ts file. I was like, okay, pretty simple concept. So uh, I just Googled and went to the Netlify website and saw that, okay, they have already written the uh, APIs. They already have the APIs available by using which you can connect to the uh, Netlify and uh, you can just deploy the uh, uh, folder as well. So I just took the uh, APIs and then just wrote the code and it was it was done. And then after a few, uh, I think uh, after that, few more people wrote the deploy builder. I think, uh, uh, meanwhile, I think Minko was already working with Zite. I think Zite is now Vessel. And uh, uh, he was also working with uh, the uh, Microsoft team. So uh, they already, they also launched their own builders to deploy the uh, websites. So I think on uh, the Azure one, uh, Wasim, Wasim was working and uh, uh, Shamula Jacobs. So they were already working on it. And then the, it was really good use case, right? So ng deploy is something which I really like because if you think about the entire development lifecycle, so you do ng new to start a new project. And what you do at the end, you deploy the application. So ng deploy, it's deployed your application, your entire workflow is done. So I just liked the idea and then went to uh, and uh, created this package. And once three to four packages were available, I think Minko initiated this, that uh, we should have a deploy command. So I saw the documentation and everything. And uh, then it, uh, I think 8.2.3 version. So it was not launched when Angular 8 was released. So Angular 8.2.3 version, uh, they released the deploy command as well. So everyone's life became easier. <laughs> Okay, so when you create an ng deploy builder, what does mm -hmm. the structure of this project look like? There, there must be some JSON file or something that, that tells the Angular CLI, here's the path of the schematic, or is it all convention yeah. based? Uh, no, so if, if I think about the structure, right? So the builders, uh, the, the project structure of builder, it, it looks a lot similar to schematics. In schematics, you have something known as collection.json. In builders, you have something known as builder.json. In package dot, in schematics, in, uh, package.json, you have to define, okay, this is my schematics, and then you have to give the path of collection.json. Similarly, in builders, you do the same. You give, okay, this is builders, and this is path to my builder.json file. So there is a lot of similarity. And uh, again, you can, uh, you have index.ts file. The only thing which differs is the APIs. Otherwise, the entire structure is same, uh, and files are different, schematics, collection, uh, builders, because those are, both are like for different use cases. So in this builder's JSON file, 
Do you have to mm -hmm. have a property named deploy or something? Uh, no. So uh, deploy is already created by Angular CLI, right? So in uh, what you add in your file builders.json is you add the uh, uh, right now, I can actually call it anything, but right now we call it as deploy. Okay. So I give the command name as deploy and then uh, that's that deploy command is something which is used at my uh, configuration. So it has nothing to do with, I think uh, the actual implementation, that's the, that's just the command. So you can just use the deploy command and uh, there is something called implementation similar to schemat uh, uh, schematics as well. In schematics also you define uh, where will be my index.ts file. So you can define implementation schema and description. And uh, generally, of course, uh, as you said, uh, we give the command name as deploy just to uh, just your, so your ng deploy can just pick that command up. Okay. Okay. So a little step back for a minute. I might, I want to make sure I understand this correctly. Mm -hmm. So builders, it's a little weird name builders because <laughs> I, I think of it more as a task and the Angular CLI mm -hmm. is a task runner. Mm -hmm. And we used to have other uh, tools like this, for example, Grunt mm -hmm. and Gulp task mm -hmm. runners. So maybe the thing that people find weird at first is why is it called builders? Because it can do a lot mm -hmm. more than just build stuff. Uh, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, I, I actually uh, don't remember why it is called builders. But uh, if you think about there are two parts in, in, in builders, which comes in. So there is something known as architect API. So people often get confused. What is the architect API and what is the builders? So uh, if you, if you notice your angular.json, all the builders are actually defined inside an architect. So if you just open the uh, angular.json, there will be architect. And then there, there are lists, list of commands, which you have. So architects are nothing but which is like, which is orchestrating your builders, all the commands, right? So I think uh, maybe, uh, maybe they named builder because uh, it was initially used as uh, the builder for like your surf, your build command, and then your karma. So they might have named it as builder, but yep, that, that may be the uh, case. Yes. So, so there, then, are, there are a few commands built in like ng build and test and the other ones yeah. we discussed. Can you do mm -hmm. your own commands? Uh, for example, I created one called analyze. So what I did is, uh, there was a talk from uh, Igor at the ngconf 2020. So he actually, uh, gave an uh, talk on how to optimize your application. And he ended up using something known as source map, Ex uh, not source map explorer. Yes. Uh, yeah. Source map explorer. So I really like the idea because, uh, it can give me more information. I have used webpack analyzer as well. It doesn't give me, uh, the data at the component level. And what I was impressed with, uh, impressed was actually, uh, when I run source map explorer, it gives me, uh, the bundle size for each component. So I, I tried it and then I thought let's, let's, uh, because there are, there are few, uh, manual things which I need to do. So I just, I worked as a developer and I start, uh, started actually creating a builder. So I just created a new builder for, so analyze and the way you run is, for example, ng deploy is a command. I, I don't have to do anything, but in case you create a your new command. So uh, the way to run is you can just say ng run and your command. So, uh, you cannot of course directly give analyze. So you give project name colon your command name. So if I, my project name is, let's say mm, angular, right? So I can say ng run angular colon my pack, my command name, and it will just go ahead and execute that. ng run is the command, which can plug your custom custom command to the angular so ng run is something we are looking for. Okay. So if I have a project called the admin app, there would be mm -hmm. a property inside of the angular JSON within the mm -hmm. architect object. Is that right? Or no, mm -hmm. it's actually the top level property would be called yeah, it's project uh, admin app. Yeah. And inside of that, there's an yeah, exactly. architect property architect. and yeah. there you have yeah, the architect, ar property. architect targets. So you have a name, for example, yes. analyze, yeah. and then you, so how do you mm -hmm. point that to a builder? What does that look like? Yeah. So, uh, when you do, so, and when you do ng run, right, then you give your project name. So on whichever project, so you, of course we have mono repos now, so I can just target whichever project, which I want, uh, I want to right? I have to just make sure that that particular command is added there. So, uh, just to add that, I mean, uh, of course that's an important part. So what you can do is, so in angular or JSON, uh, the first, of course, the top level property is the projects. So in projects you have, then after that you have a project name. So for example, you said admin app, right? So at inside admin app, you have all the properties, then comes your architect, 
and inside architect comes all the commands. So when you say ng run the project name, so it goes to project inside your angular.json. It tries to find, okay, if this particular project exists, if that particular project exists, of course, if it does not exist, it will throw an exception. But if it exists, it will pick up whatever you have mentioned after colon. So you mentioned a command called analyze. So it will go to architect. In architect, you have defined all the commands. So if it will check, do you do we have something called analyze here? If it is available, it will run it. Otherwise, it will just throw an exception. So so we do ng run admin app colon mm -hmm. analyze. And then it goes and finds inside of the architect property yeah. of this project. It finds the analyze command. And what does the object for that command look yes. like? So uh, it, it's always builder and options. And you can also pass something extra uh, called uh, configurations. For example, in build, we generally uh, use this configuration, right? Uh, so these are three properties which you can pass. Oh, right. OK, configurations. Yes, we actually use that a lot. So we would have CI configurations for our build pipeline or whatever. So that's where you can have. Yep. So you have the default options that are used when you develop and run these commands. But you can add some configurations with some other options on top of it. You don't have to mention them all. You can just mention the ones you want to be different. Uh, in configurations, yes. Uh, but in, in case you are creating your own command, you have to define, OK, what will be the different options? Of course, the existing commands has their uh, few options. In case you want to override that, then of course, Jab has written already the uh, builders where you can actually pass a new Webpack configuration and it will be overwritten. But in case you are writing your own command, you have to actually mention, OK, my option will consist of this these properties. Or if I want to pass some configurations, this will be the configurations which I need to pass. OK, yeah, that's very cool. That's very cool. So now we cover builders and schematics mm -hmm. and how to configure them and use them. You can create your own. And I'm feeling like we left out some part. Like, what does a schematic actually look like? Which APIs do you have? And how do you set that up? What does a typical yeah. schematic so, look like? Uh, yeah, so if I go to schematics, there are like three main parts in, in your schematics. So we have something known as a, a, a rule. Then you have something known as tree. And uh, the last part is uh, your uh, context, which is available, which is known as schematic context. So if I think about a rule, is a uh, rule is something which let's, uh, as we spoke about schematics, right? So schematic is nothing but your virtual file system. Now you need to work on that virtual file system. So and always, uh, there will be like a lot of operations involved. You may uh, need to rewrite some file. You may need to delete some file. And writing all everything inside a function is, of course, something which we never prefer. So what you can do is you can create multiple rules. So what rule does is it will take a tree and it will return another tree. So if I pass, for example, let's let's say there is a command called run external schematic, right? So using run external schematic, you can execute any schematic which exists, for example, NGNU, right? I want to create a new project. So I can just say run external schematics and uh, Angular, whatever pack, or whatever schematics exist, for example, with application or with library. And then I can pass it to another rule, another function, which takes that tree and I now I what what I want to do is on top of the existing uh, projects as you mentioned you, you had some requirement where you wanted to modify some file now I can pass this entire tree to another function which does that so the advantage is we are able to actually test it I mean of course when you have smaller functions it is it's easier to test and then tree of course is your virtual file system and then you have schematic context which gives you uh, the information about in which context your schematic is running. Because when you go to mono repos, you have multiple projects. You have to be aware that, okay, I'm running inside, let's say admin app, or I'm running inside use, user app. So this is where schematic context comes into the picture. It also gives you the access to the logger APIs. So in case you want to log something, you can go ahead and do that using schematic context. So these are three important parts. And uh, then inside tree, uh, you have few methods. For example, if I want to create a file, you have uh, so same. So I relate it to CRUD operation, which you do in on database. But here we are doing it on file system. So this is where tree helps you. OK, so you read some file. It puts it into this virtual file tree that's kind mm -hmm. of known as the tree API. You make your changes. Mm -hmm. And then when you run this schematic, you can, you can do a dry run and that yep. kind of prevents it from writing 
to the actual file system afterwards. So it'll do the changes in the virtual file tree and you can log them out to see, okay, this file was created, this one was modified, and then you can kind of test yep. it out. Uh, I guess you could use it when developing the schematic. It would be very helpful to do dry runs. Yeah, that's exactly. So you can actually do that. So once you have written your schematic, you can actually uh, test it by running it locally. So you have just a command called schematics uh, as schematics you have, you have already installed. So you just need to say schematics dot colon and your uh, the schematic name. For example, if I mention ng add, so I will say ng add and then it will run. It will give me, okay, what uh, if it was successful or not. If I want to test it, if whether it works or not, I can just always pass uh, something known as debug equals to false or you also have try run. So I prefer using debug false for some just to save some key, right? So you have to say dry run rather than say, okay, debug true, debug false. So I just use debug false and it actually creates all the files in case I want to test it out. Okay. I seem to remember there's one more important part. You can have files inside the schematics folder and they can have, they, they are kind of template files. So they will have mm -hmm. these, yes. I don't remember the characters or symbols. Maybe you remember you know, what they look like and uh, what yeah. they're used for. So. So uh, you, uh, in case you want to, uh, for example, you want something where you can create some files, right? For example, ng generate. So uh, the example which we take uh, took off uh, Angular Material, uh, uh, the navigation schematic. So what you do is you put them inside a folder called files, okay? And then uh, in case you want it to be created uh, inside another folder, for example, I want to say I want to pass a name. So, so generally, what we do in ng generate is component and then give a name and it takes that name and creates a folder of that particular name, for example, employee. And then you also have something known as, uh, in case I want it to be flat or flat true or false. But uh, what we do is we say files, files folder, and then we create a folder with underscore underscore and the, uh, the variable name. For example, I want the folder name to be created as uh, employee. So I will say uh, the name parameter is something which I will use. I'll say underscore underscore name and underscore underscore. So that's that's uh, that particular thing will be replaced. Once you run your schematic, that, that name will be replaced with the name which you have passed. So even the, the files and the folder names can be used as a template and taken parameters that will yeah. decide the names of those yes. files and folders. Yes. And you are telling exactly. what's inside of these files then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so once you create that folder, for example, of course uh, you can skip that in case you just want that it should be created inside files, you can skip that level. So I can just skip and say fi inside files I have, for example, I want to create a TS file, I want to create a spec.ts file. So you have to just give a name, uh, same again. So you have to say underscore underscore, whatever in, in this case we are, use, we are using name, right? So I'll say underscore underscore name, underscore underscore dot, then maybe dot component, dot TS, dot template. And similarly for others, right? So if I say HTML, so I'll say, okay, underscore, underscore name, dot component, dot HTML, dot template. This is the naming convention which you generally use. Okay, so inside of those files, say I wanted to create some service class, how could I take a parameter mm -hmm. as the name of that class? Yeah, so uh, for that you get uh, API. So there is a function called apply. So that function is available from, I think, Angular Schematics API. Uh, let me just, yeah. So Angular DevKit Schematics, it has multiple APIs available. So you have something known as apply. So in apply, you pass another function called URL where you specify, okay, this is the files folder. When you run the schematics, go ahead and uh, apply all the uh, virtual changes, which we have to this files folder. And after that, uh, you can pass a, a function called apply template. So apply template does nothing. So it is like apply template will remove the dot template, which you have in your file name. Earlier, we uh, we used to, I think, uh, use directly apply, if uh, if I remember correctly, because I did it a year ago for NGRX, uh, when we are we were moving from dot uh, ts to dot ts dot template files. And it was, I think, released uh, in around 2019, the earlier uh, 2019. So uh, you can use just apply templates. It will remove the dot templates from it. Now coming to the point where we need to replace some variables. So for example, you want to say, okay, now I have a class. So I have written export class and my class name, but class name is not class name. It's a variable. So uh, you can say, uh, you can use actually, uh, it was really funny because I remember I used to use this expression a lot in ASP.NET. So yeah, it's, it was less than equals to, and then you can place your variable inside that. So I, I remember the syntax was pretty popular in ASP.NET days. So you, you can say, okay, uh, less than equals to and your, your variable name. So let's say name. 
and that name now from where that name will come so you uh, you just we just spoke about this apply function right so you can pass two parameters there is a something called strings and there is options so op in options you will pass all the parameters which we have received from user so let's say name is one of them and you have you have to make make it mandatory because of course that is required so in options you can specify okay what are the different parameters generally what we do is we take we create something known as uh, collection.json okay and then there is something known as schema.json where we define okay what will be the different options which will be available so you in schema.json you write everything that okay there will be a name which will be type of string and uh, uh, in case it has a default value you can define the default value and at the end of the uh, entire schema you can just mention what are the fields which are required so in this case of course name so i can mark it as mandatory and once you receive that options actually it is available inside your template you can do everything uh, because it's it's like you can compute it right inside the uh, syntax which i just told you about less than and equals to you can compute it and now the, uh, there is another problem i have received the name but someone may mention that name uh, let's say he mentioned okay capital class or capital employee or someone mentioned employee but we have a pattern for class names so there is another uh, if, uh, parameter which is called strings which is nothing but the uh, strings is a utility function which is available inside these schematics so what you can do is you uh, you can use any of the methods which is available inside strings class it's a i think it's a static class and it has something some methods for example uh, you can convert it to classify dasherize. call method called dasherize yeah so all the, all those utility methods are you can even convert it to plural so those methods are available so it's it's really handy you can just uh, go ahead and uh, do that so if i pass the name of the service uh, as mm -hmm. in kebab case with lower case and mm -hmm. dashes uh, between them but now i want the class name to be in pascal case so with upper case yep. and an upper case uh, starting letter for yep. every word there's a string function for that a utility function yeah. utility function available so you can just use that utility function and then, then that's it Okay, and you also said a moment ago that these parameters that our schematics can take, we can mm -hmm. actually define the, like the type and it, whether it's mandatory in what was yeah. that called the schematics JSON file? Uh, it's called schema.json. Schema.json. Okay. Yep. So where you can define the properties. Uh, so there is a tag called uh, there's a there is a tag called properties, and inside that uh, you can define okay what will be the different parameters or different options which my um, schematic or uh, it's the same schema.json is available for builders so it's applicable at both the ends so you can define okay what are the different properties which i can accept and uh, you can say type or you can define always type and then you can say default value what will be the default value in case you just don't want user to enter it and uh, you want, you may want to override it so you can mention default value and the one more important thing is uh, one amazing thing about uh, schema.json is something known as x prompt so x prompt is really useful in case you want to collect some user information so that was that was really interesting because uh, there are a lot of times right we may want to run these schematics but we also want to collect the user input for example ng new you do ng new and then you wait to actually capture some information from user do you want to create a routing do you want okay css scss so that is also possible and you don't have to write the code so i was exploring how it's uh, this is possible if i don't want to write x prompt so you have some uh, packages available called inquirer or commander which you can actually use it to implement but inside schematic they have given it by default you just need to just mention okay i will take this parameter from user okay so even though you have some parameters and they might be required so if the user didn't mm -hmm. add those parameters parameters you can ask them Oh, did you want routing? Yes or no? And you can put in a default yes. yeah. for no, for example. Yeah, exactly. You can also, if I remember correctly, you can also do like a list of choices for an option. Yes, yeah, that that is also available. And I think they have modified the structure now uh, in Angular 8. So they have simplified it. So you can just pass a list. I think there is a there is something called type equals to list. So earlier you have to I think that that was really complicated thing to do. Now with list, you just need to pass all the parameters and it will take it. Yes. The same example, CSS, right? Okay, so when uh, you do an engine you new, give, you can uh, you can choose between CSS and SAS and less and style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that's the that's X, X prompt thing. Yeah, that's X, X prompt. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so we we definitely covered a lot about what are builders and schematics, how to use them, 
a little about how to create them yourself, the structure of these files, the content, the APIs available. Um, and a special one I remember you mentioned was the run external schematic or something like that. So that's where you can yeah. you can build on top of existing schematics. So you could in the virtual file tree run the the built-in ng generate component schematic, and then you can change yeah. some stuff before yeah. actually writing it out to the file system. So that was definitely yeah. what I'm going to need to do my own generate component command. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Another thing that would be very interesting for us to discuss before we, we go to the, the end of this show is uh, the NX tool chain. Because these things, yeah. like like we discussed, they could be interesting outside of Angular. And Nawal exactly. has kind of started doing that with their NX CLI. And mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. you want to tell us about NX plugins. Uh, yes. So uh, I was uh, so I used to always think what NX NX uh, in inside NX I can just go ahead and use uh, any any type of project right so I can create an Angular project React project so I I was wondering what are those so I, I remember I was learning about schematic and I was just exploring things so wh from where I can just refer some examples and I went to the NX repo and saw a lot of builders and schematics so I realized that NX is actually nothing but the collection of builders and schematics. So the, what they have done is actually they have written a lot of schematics and builders uh, for, uh, let's say you say uh, you want to add a Next.js project to your application. So what they do is actually they go ahead and run a schematic, which creates the next next uh, or Next.js project for you. And then they add some commands. So they have created all the builders internally, which goes uh, maybe, uh, for example, if you want to use Webpack to build your application, they have written some custom implementation and then just they add it to your nx.json file and uh, this, then then the things work the same way right in as in angular so they uh, they have some called something called uh, orchestrator or architect api which goes in and run this particular builders which are available so it can be your react project it can be your uh, vue.js project so anything and that actually opened a gate for some external frameworks to be plugged in into the nx ecosystem right so I can just go ahead and uh, we. Uh, I remember there is there is one person who actually reached out to me and said, "Can we create it for Strapi? So can we just plug in Strapi into an X project?" I was like, "Okay." And uh, yes, it's possible because it's nothing but schematics and collection. So what we have to do is we just need to create a new schematics which actually initializes a new Strapi project, which we can of course from uh, do it by creating a new project and empty project in your repository and just copy paste. So I can I already have files folder and I can just put everything inside that. And then, uh, and uh, what the NX team did it uh, because there is no structure defined for uh, builders. They said, okay, whenever you want to create a new plugin, don't don't go ahead and create a new plugin in Angular. Then plugin. So they said, okay, I have we have created a CLI so that create uh, it's called create NX plugin. So you can just say npx create NX plugin and then your project name, and it will create the entire structure which contains schematics, which contains builders, and you just need to write your code. And one thing, uh, one more thing, which I really liked about is it's it's re really easy to test those. I was just writing a plugin. Uh, I mean, in progress of actually writing a plugin, and I really liked the way they have simplified it. For example, I want, if I want to run any schematics or if, if I want to run any schematic command inside that, so they have given the APIs inside their own uh, framework, which I can just run and see if it is working fine or not. And then you can of course uh, build and uh, publish. If you don't want to publish. It's, it doesn't matter. You can still go ahead and use it inside your mono repos. Yes. So the NX CLI makes it really easy to both to create these plugins, which are basically builders and schematics, and also to test them and also to use them within the same workspace. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah, have, to have to be an Angular project. It can be React, exactly. Node.js, and Nest.js, or anything you want, really, if you create it yourself. Yep. That's very powerful. So did we leave anything out? About builders and schematics and NX plugins. Yeah, I think we covered everything for builder. For builders, if I think the most important thing is uh, the use cases, which we already covered, like uh, deploy. Deploy was the best use case which I can come across, and uh, that's it. One last thing I want to mention is that if you, <laughs> I mean, it's difficult to learn the schematics APIs, the trees and the rules and all of this, the context. If you just want to use the NX CLI, for example, to run some other mm -hmm. command line tool, or maybe you know how to create mm -hmm. a command line tool, or you have some existing thing and you want to integrate it 
with your NX CLI workflow. NX actually has mm -hmm. this builder. I think it's called run command. And in the option, you basically mm -hmm. just give it a command line command to run whenever you run this builder. So that's a very easy integration uh, to get you started. Well, Did you that's, know that's about really this nice. one? Uh, no, actually, I'm, I'm exploring the builders part. Uh, I was creating the uh, schematics first. And uh, then actually, I have to. Uh, we have to actually go ahead and run a few commands. I think this is where it, it will be pretty useful because we want to run these choppy commands as part of the existing workflow. So I think we can just go ahead and use it. There's also an interesting builder or plugin from NX. I think it's called Move or Rename or something, where you can actually rename your project, both the, the folders and, and and also the project configuration in your Angular JSON or Workspace JSON, I think you can also use with NX, right? Uh -huh. So those are some very powerful tools. And I know the Narwhal team is always uh, trying to create other uh, interesting plugins and the community is very empowered by these more or less simple building blocks to create their own yeah. and contribute to the community. I think uh, they started this uh, next plugin thing this year. So they now have an entire page available for plugins where you can actually go ahead and search all the plugins which are available. Even they have command called uh, I think NX list, NX list, if you run it, you will, you will see all the plugins which are available uh, from the community. That's great. And it's all for free. <laughs> it's all for free. Yeah, of course. <laughs> free and open source. Very nice. Santosh, so now we're at the end of the show. Now I'm going to ask you to shout out about a person or two that did something amazing or inspired you or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always keep two people at the top. Uh, of course, there were there are like so many people in my entire journey that who helped me. Uh, you are of course one of them, and Max uh, Max is also one of them. But uh, if I have to think, when I started my uh, open source contribution, I started with an uh, NGRX and uh, the way Tim and actually Wesley Greens who actually uh, motivated me uh, was really commendable. I mean, they they I never felt like I am new to this community. And uh, they always supported me. I remember they they were the one who introduced me to the in-depth in -depth team. So I was just working on an issue uh, inside NGRX and they said, why not to write a blog post? And I was like, okay, I've never written a blog post. And they said, okay, no problem. You can just start. And then uh, it took 15 or 20 days, I think, the, to, the, to complete the review. And then this, that's how I actually joined in-depth. So uh, you can, of course, uh, follow Wesley Greens at Wes Greens. Uh, on Twitter and Tim, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Sorry. If, uh, so if you know, I think uh, so. Just, Wesley Grimes so, and Tim Deschwire. So I think Tim is from Belgium. And Wesley is from uh, USA. Okay. So Wesley so, works for Nawo, I think. Yeah, he works for Nawo. So. And I don't remember where Tim works, but they are both part of the NGRX team. Yeah, the, both are part of NGRX core team. And they help you get started with open source contribution to NGRX and also writing. Uh, exactly. And they always motivated me that, okay, whatever you are doing is you're doing a great job. And that's how I moved into other projects. I started contributing to Angular and then I started my own. So th that was really helpful. I mean, I, of course, the entire NGRX team is really, really supportive. Uh, I remember when I started uh, contributing to Angular, the first thing which I noticed was my PR was reviewed by the same person, Brandon Roberts. <laughs> so he was at the uh, he was looking into docs at that moment. So that uh, he was really he's also awesome. Yeah, Brandon Roberts. He's also a great guy, and he even even he works for now now. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they are harvesting all the great people from the community. <laughs> Yeah, now Max also works for Narwhal. So. Even Max Koretsky also works for Narwhal. <laughs> they have all the great guys and some talented women as well. Now, Santosh, now it's time for your shameless plug. So now you can promote <laughs> anything you like of your own stuff. You're not really a consultant, so you don't have a business to sell. What else do you have yeah. that's interesting to me? Starting of the month, I took a break from Twitter for a week. And then I realized that I wanted to do something from a long time. That was my dream to do. And then I'm finally coming up with a talk show. Everything is set up. So I'm just waiting for some tools which should arrive from by next week. And then I'll just have a demo if it works. Everything, the setup is, everything is perfect. I just don't want to leave anything. So I purchased a new curtains. I have purchased, purchased a new, uh, there is something which holds the curtains. So I will be using green screen. 
and in that talk show we will have of course you are the first one first guest we have and we will be talking about monorepos and the good thing is i have already blocked the calendar till september so the idea is it will be like 45 minute live show where people can come ask question and they can be of course get involved and uh, of course i mean uh, we will discuss about uh, anything related to it's not it won't be particular to angular so that's the that's the idea whole idea about this talk show because of course there are there are already so many talks uh, which are so many shows which are happening for angular for example angular air we have and i think uh, aaron frost is running one so i just wanted to keep uh, do something different so i the uh, on uh, first episode we are going to talk about monorepos and then second episode it will be like totally different we will be talking about blazor of course one of the one of the technology where dot, a lot of dot net uh, guys are interested in and the third is again totally different the third episode would be with martina cross and it will be how to start freelancing because a lot of people come to me and ask okay how to start the freelancing so i said okay and martina of course is one of the best person i can have my on my show to talk about freelancing so that's the plan uh, we already have uh, three more speakers till september we have from uh, siddhartha ajmera he will be joining in august and then we have armen armen will be joining us in september and then there is one guy from india i really like this progress in the community so he will be joining us in the first week of september his name is uh, ankit ankit prajapati so he'll be and then once two episodes are done i'll open the calendars for october and november so that's the plan so i'll be pretty busy doing those stuffs Okay and your show is called Tech Talks with Santosh. <laughs> Tech Talks with Santosh. Where do we find the show? Uh so it's available on uh, YouTube and uh, you can just go to youtube.com and uh, you can search I'm just really new so I I don't know how to find my channel name. I think uh, on YouTube you can just search for Tech Talks with Santosh and you will be able to find it. So let's see how it goes. I'm really excited for this. Yes. Yes, me too. It's going to be exciting. very nice project maybe people can also follow you on twitter to figure out when this is all going on because it will be live so you will be have a chance to join and yep. uh, how do so, i uh, find you on twitter what's your twitter name yeah it's santosh adav dev so you can follow me on santosh adav dev and uh, of course everything will be announced on twitter and whenever there is a new episode coming up thank you very much for joining the deep dive santosh it's been a pleasure thanks a lot thanks a lot plus for having me Okay, that's it for today. Bye. Bye-bye. The deep dive was brought to you by indev.dev.